money from high schools I went to. And uh, so I opened it up, and there was a very kind and gracious letter, um, well written, as you may imagine, from your poet, poet laureate, uh, from Olivia here. And uh, I sent a, uh, an email that day. I was very pleased. It uh, made my day. So thank you very much for asking me to be here. And uh, also for letting Larry come along, because he's a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, that song was called uh, We'll See. Uh, and uh, it, it's a relatively new tune that came about because um, I had been thinking about some things that had been going on uh, you know, generally. Uh, there had been some shows in which I played, and there's people staring at their phones. You know, like you look out into a dark room and it's kind of lit up that color blue with the phones, you know, like lighting up their faces. You know? uh, so that made it into the song. Um, and I guess uh, it was just a general representation of what I had been feeling at that point. Um, also, it, it, I, I should I should ask, uh, what type of classes do we have here? Are they mostly English classes? I heard there was a history class here. Uh, right? I don't know that they surfaced. Oh. So, All mostly language? English, and then some some randos over in the corner there. <laughs> Hi. You guys, you guys got hall passes? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> 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 I told him to be careful of Bubba because he didn't get like a Pitzer's pass, so I was oh. like, oh my god, I'm just This next tune that we're going to do here has a, a literary bent to it, and um, also in your fine introduction, you mentioned that uh, I wrote the songs based on William Kennedy's uh, trio of uh, novels, uh, the first three in the Albany cycle. Um, is, is anybody familiar with the author William Kennedy? Much. I'm sorry, what's the author's name? William Kennedy. Yeah, it, it, um, came to prominence in 1984. Uh, so you can imagine, well, no, you can't imagine. <laughs> right, I can. Uh, so in, 1980, in 1984, he wrote a book called, uh, actually in 1983, he wrote a book called Iron Week. And uh, the novel uh, hit many, many people in the country in a profound way. Um, and Hollywood thought the novel was good enough to put it into a movie form. And uh, you may know Jack Nicholson. Yes. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay. Uh, he starred as uh, the lead character in, in Iron League, the movie. Uh, his co-star uh, was Meryl Streep, who's a phenomenal actress. Iron what? Iron Weed. I don't think your vocal amplification is working. It's just your voice we're hearing. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because I've got this on mute. <laughs> <laughs> How's that now? <laughs> <laughs> it's a standard standard affair here, you know. This is the way things work. We did not have a sound check. Yeah. Yeah. And we are professionals, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I Ironweed, uh, his co star is uh, Jack Nicholson's co star is uh, Meryl Streep and uh, she's been in a great deal of good movies. She's an incredible actress. Check her out. Uh, and then uh, playing uh, the foil to uh, Jack Nicholson's character is actually a awesome songwriter named Tom Waits. Does anybody know Tom Waits? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We knew. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a recommendation to all you youngins. Uh, get yourself some Tom Waits. Or maybe they should wait a few years. <laughs> They'll be all right. Well, I figured if I told them they should wait a few years that they'd immediately go out and get it. All right. Uh, but uh, to get back to the, uh, the, the thrust of this conversation, um, this tune right here that I'm about to play, or Larry and I are about to play, is called Billy, and it's based off of the second book in the cycle called Billy Phelan's Greatest Game. Uh, and, uh, it's, um, so this song is, is based on a book, and the book is based uh, in part on a, a story from uh, the Old Testament uh, in which uh, a son is offered up for sacrifice. Let me know if this gets too loud. Excuse 
followed a vow will lay a song out for the slain the good Lord's been saying you can go with us man of the world that sees a smoke curl on fire as he sits as he lays his bed of help is for his Purchasing sins, they play the savior from merit behavior with duplicitous grace. Darkest hour. When the sun is free to What's in a name? If you toss the game, it's a small town. Work gets around. You scratch the cue again. So the young man stands with his list of commands and he rolls the dice if only to entice a life lived by the damn darkest hour you read in morning's conspiracy is when the sun is free to rise. But after the light is shone, and the station of man becomes known, we hurl bricks at the sky. And the sun without, they play the same game by a different name. God bless the boy who makes his own. So we're going to open up the field to questions. Are there any questions out there other than can I go to the bathroom? Because <laughs> no, I can't answer that one. Uh, I wanna... Go right up. Oh, let's yeah. No, let the student ask the question first. Are you on Spotify? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That's a big deal? Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, someone else have a question? Oh, I was just wondering where you're all from. I'm originally from the eastern end of Long Island, but I live in Somerville these days. And I'm from uh, just outside of Albany, New York, um, a place called Sand Lake. Uh, I 
live up on a mountain, so this is more people than I typically see in a day. <laughs> How you liking the world? Uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's great. There's lots of reading material. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else? Or should we just keep going? Um, how did you guys meet? Say that again? How did you guys meet? Oh. You want the long story or the short story? Um, uh, I, I was booked on a show at a really great uh, venue in Saratoga, New York called uh, Cafe Lena. And uh, it's the oldest running, uh, continuously running coffee house in the United States. And there's just great history there. Um, you know, going back further than 1984, there's just a whole lot of people that have played there that mean a great deal to songwriters and musicians. Being able to play there means a lot. And uh, I was standing in the, I was standing in the parking lot, uh, waiting to get in, and it was my first show there, so I was very nervous. And uh, this car pulls up, and it's got Massachusetts plates. And uh, I was opening for a songwriter named Daniel Moralia, who's actually from Revere. How about that? Um, and uh, her husband, Tom Bianchi, uh, were in the driver's seat and the uh, uh, passenger seat, respectively, and in the back seat, crammed in with all the amps and some instruments was this fella. <laughs> <laughs> the car pulls up, and you know, they see me with the guitar, so they immediately identify me as the opener, and the back window rolls down, and his head kind of peers out, and he's like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was kind of, I was just like, all right. And they put me at ease immediately, and uh, we were in the green room chatting, and uh, we shared... Uh, literature in common. Um, he was turning me on to uh, books by Larry McMurtry, um, uh, Lonesome Dove, I don't know if anybody's heard of that or read of it. Um, great adventure, great adventure. So if you're in, you know, stuck in the winter and you're looking for something to, you know, if you need to go on a vacation, you can pick up Lonesome Dove and that's a vacation. Um, and I think I was uh, sharing uh, Comanche Moon, uh, Empire, of the, uh, Empire of the Summer Moon, right? Um, and uh, so we were chatting back and forth about books, and uh, I just hit it off. Yeah. Until we met. You can read the story on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Yeah, let's go on a, uh, an adventure on this one. We'll play a tune called Skeleton. Gonna take a trip down to Southwest United States, Arizona way. my bones wide and I'll sleep through the night on a skeleton